right? We're rolling on a th- today is Thursday, right? I'm saying it's Thursday. Is today Thursday? Today yes. is Thursday, right? Okay, yes. good. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, today is Thursday, and we're just getting on. And I'm like running in here to this studio. <laughs> I'm by myself today. Like my whole house is empty, which is awesome. Nice. But I'm running in here. I know it's so rare to not have any kids, no dogs, no nothing. And I'm running in here today because I'm on the phone with the people who are doing my colonoscopy. Oh no. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You were supposed to get uh, Eiffel Towered a long time ago. Right. And I didn't get Eiffel Towered because COVID. So they kept canceling and moving my appointments. So they moved me from this date to, in June to this date in July, this date in July, this date in August. And when they called me to confirm the date in August, I was like, oh shit, I got to look at my calendar now. That date doesn't work for me all of a sudden. So now I got to move it back to September. But here's the interesting thing. Once you schedule your colonoscopy, then two days in advance, you got to go get a COVID test. Makes so, sense. Right. So, so they've made all these arrangements for me to go get a drive-through COVID test, right? And this guy calls me back and he wants to do the whole thing I've just done all over again. I just spent 20 minutes on the phone with these people and he literally wants to start from minute one and he keeps getting the dates wrong. And he, no, it's the 14th. I'm like, no, it's the 16th. No, I'm like, I got to go, man. We, me and this lady just did this. You like, <laughs> So it's like these people, they, they have multiple people in the same office doing the same job and they're not communicating with one another. You better so hope multiple people ain't going up there rear end, playboy, because you better, you better, that's a one, you better get the doctor, one doctor. No, two doctors. I, I don't know. Oh, All I know is this, oh, they're going, they're going in front? here, they're oh. going in from the front and they're going in from the back. And in the nose. No, their mouth, they're going deep right here. And then they're going deep way up there. Do they, on the mouth one, do they, are you, they, are you going to get knocked out or how do you yeah. go deep in the mouth? Oh, um, sounds horrible. I they do what's called an endoscopy. I think it's called. I bet my it mother is. would know. You know, like my mother's a medical expert. What are you my doing? mother would know. No, what are you doing? No, no, she would know. She would know. She's like your uncle once had five of those in two weeks. Believe me, I know about this stuff. You know, this is my mother knows all about all the medical procedures. You know, and yeah. and, and 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 she'll call me and she'll go, has the doctor tried this yet? And I'm like, um. You know, I mean, I kind of trust the doctors over here, Ma. <laughs> you know? So, shout well, out to my mom. Well, see, if you were born and raised in a Mexican family, you would understand that you listen to your grandma first, then the doctor. Because if there's not a plant that can that can rescue you, I don't think a doctor is going to be able to rescue you. That's the way it works. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. So, so, so my mother comes from the more Hebraic background of know-it-all, knows yeah. more than the doctor. Yeah. And you come from the background of grandma has some sort of plant-based solution. Yeah, there's some sort of aloe that we can put on your tonsils that'll fix your whole body. You can rub (laughs) some uh, some vapor rub on the bottom of your feet. You could do a bendición and get slapped by your grandpa and you're all good. Little sana sana colita de rana, dude. There's plenty of ways to get fixed before going to the doctor. Yeah, my man. (laughs) All right, Big Brown. Come on, round it out here for us. What do you say, man? We got the, the Hebraic the Hispanic, and now how about the African-American man? The black people, ginger ale, Robitussin, and Vicks. Not in that <laughs> order, but those three things can basically cure everything. It's funny no you bring ginger ale, dude, because the Mexicans are all about 7-Up. Drink 7-Up. Drink 7-Up. We don't do seven, ginger ale. We do 7-Up. Seven up. Seven uh, we do ginger ale, too. 7-Up's on the list, but <laughs> it's just for indigestion. It's just to yeah. get you to burp. That, yeah. That's it. That's it. Like the remedies are so simple. It's just fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. We, we, my mother would hit ginger ale. She'd hit me up with some of that pink ass, thick Pepto Bismol, which Ooh. would make me want to throw up by taking Pepto Bismol. And yeah, my mother, Vicks on the chest. Oh, yeah. Rub it in. Yeah. Rub that Vicks in on the chest or take some and stick it up my nose. I would my mother, say, yeah, I do that. When it's, when it's I do really, that. really bad, they do thick right over the nose. Yeah, oh. dude, I slab that shit on like it's mustache cream, just blah, like all over, dude. If it, if I have a stuffy nose, I'm putting it all up in there and all up on the mustache and on the bottom of your feet. New one for you guys. Try it out. Where on the bottom of your feet? All over from toes to heel, dude. Just rub it and just slather it on there and then sleep like that. Okay. Toes to heel. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Well, there you go. We're, we're just getting officially rolling here on a Thursday afternoon. Glad everybody's here. Today, this is shocking. This is unbelievable. Wait a second. Today is baseball's yeah. opening day? Oh, really? Oh, man. Dude, aroma. It's, what's today's date? July 23rd. 23rd. July 23rd. 
we're not well into the second half of the season after the all-star break. Today is baseball's opening day. And what I find fascinating about today being baseball's opening day is how baseball was so far behind the NBA. And yet, interestingly, they're going. They're ready to go. But and the but, news that I'm pretty sure you've missed because you were on a phone call in the last 10 minutes, yeah. the difference between the NBA and MLB is that the NBA is in a bubble and they've had zero positive tests for the last two weeks. Whereas today, the Nationals' young star, Juan Soto, tests positive and he's out for this series. Oh, wow. So so the Nationals against the Yankees to kick things off. I mean, two of the you know favorites to possibly win the World Series. I mean, you got the Dodgers, the Yankees, the Nationals are right up in there as the defending champs. But wow. So this kid... Has been has he been practicing with the team? I'm assuming so. Uh, I'll, I'll check his. Tw- I'll check Jeff Passan's tweets more. See what I can get. Okay. I mean, if I he's like got Pass- it, if he's got it, it's got it's had that spread on that team. As the catcher, you're so. the most vocal person. You deal. You catch the ball and you throw it back to the pitcher for practice. So uh, somebody else got that thing. You got to figure that that yeah. I mean, you you, you got to think it would be it would be spreading. So today's opening day of baseball, and Alex is telling us right from the get go that there's a major breaking story as we're just coming on. For everybody that's here or just getting here, make sure you do us the favor: like down below, like keep liking. Okay, go even further down, comment. Hey, great friends, what's up? Thursday afternoon, how's everybody doing? Blah blah blah, um, and then come back up over here to our YouTube chat. Or if you're watching on Facebook, you can get involved over there because I'm watching there too and I'm commenting there. And if by chance you're listening, which is probably most of you, on audio podcast, on Apple Podcast or Spotify or whatever, okay. um, just just participate. Now, Grande, yeah. yesterday we all had a chance to meet your new baby dog, Nellie. Mm-hmm. Did you go with that name? Yes. Okay. You've been telling everybody that the dog is pissing everywhere inside the apartment. Is that right? Right. So I was having a little bit of issues yesterday throughout, as you can might be able to start hearing her. I know she's going to start crying because she finished her bone. Um, hey, it's okay. And uh, she, yeah, we were having some issues potty training yesterday. She was peeing inside and chilling outside. And then I kind of figured out, I kind of figured out how to, uh, how to fit her, her rhythm. So after about six o'clock, I've had really good success. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, hold on. You can hear the doggy. So here's what Alex said to us before we come on. He said, I'm going to put the dog in the crate, you know, so the dog doesn't disturb the broadcast. And I'm saying to him, hey, bro, you know what? This is part of it now. You know, this is now Alex is engaged. He and his fiance have adopted their first living, breathing organism. This is not a plant in the apartment. This is their new little doggy that they've rescued. And, they, and they're going to give it love and they're going to give it a great home. And the dog is pissing all over everything. And Alex, poor Alex, is on sighted. Alex, I hope you can pull this up. I know you're taking care of the dog while you're trying to produce the show and be a part of the show. Alex posts this debate on sighted, like pretty much begging everybody for help. You know, like, I don't know what to do. The dog pisses inside. <laughs> the dog goes outside and chills. Will people please help a brother out and explain to me what I'm supposed to do? Browner, you jumped right in and said, no crate. Don't crate the dog, man. No, no. Listen, listen. Let the dog be free. It has to learn the apartment. And to his credit, he said he plans on not crating the dog. This is just a training method to get the dog to, to know to pee outside, not inside. I am not for crating animals. I know you guys think I'm some kind of like a super cruel Republican right wing uh, 2020 Trump guy, but I'm not. There you are. Don't crate animals i don't want to create people i don't want to create animals i don't believe in zoos i don't believe in sea world i don't unless they want to advertise with us i don't believe in any of that shit none of it none of it animals should be where they belong <laughs> in the wild and 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 they should be far away from people motherfuckers should be swimming with sharks or whales or fucking dolphins none of that stuff man let those animals be they were here before we got here they're gonna be here when we gone hopefully if we don't destroy the planet and and that's it with that Wow, there's a, a real political message, everybody, from Browner. Now, you're going to enjoy today's show. You're going to enjoy. Alex, I, I'm going to ask to direct today's show. I'm going to ask that you oh, put God. us on a three shot. I want to be on a three shot. I don't want to be on a one shot, and I don't want you to have to deal with the dog and then try and get back to whoever's yeah. talking. I, I, I just think it's because I turned my back. I turned my back to her with the chair, 
and she kind of freaks out. I think when she sees me, she's okay. So I just move the crate right next to me. So, dude, she's like already like codependent. Upon oh, one hundred percent, dude. Yesterday, um, yesterday was a long day for myself. Um, my a first time puppy owner. I've, I've been around dogs my whole life. Mexicans just have dogs running around everywhere. We don't house train dogs, though. You know, it's a very <laughs> rare thing. We have 10 dogs in the backyard when the aunts and uncles are over their dogs. So I grew up around dogs my whole life. Having a dog and ha trying to train it has been, uh, I knew it was going to be rough. I knew, obviously knew it was going to be rough. So this, this has been a, an exhausting week. But yesterday, I pat my, my lady got back home and I was like, hey, you're up, dude. You're, I'm tagging you in. And, uh, and she was taking care of it. And the dog would just come to my feet and like just nap. So we took a, a little nap together and that had, that actually showed me like if she naps next to me and as soon as she wakes up and she starts stretching, boom, going to the outside and we're going to go pee. And so far I was telling JB before the show started, I'm five for five today. I got a poop outside and I got four peas outside on the balcony. Good to go, dude. Yeah. Once you get a dog, cause you see people who don't have dogs, here's what people who don't have dogs think of people who have dogs. You got to be crazy to walk around and follow a dog with a plastic bag wrapped around your hand and pick up a big, fresh, hot, steaming dude. pile of dog shit. When they're gooey? Oh Yeah. Dude, you got to love that dog to pick up that dog's dog shit. And you also have to be kind of a good neighbor to not like leave dog shit all over people's yards. You got to try and do the best you can clean it up. Look at this doggy. Hi, Nelly. Hi, Nelly. Hi, Nelly. Hi, Nelly. Hi, girl. Browner, <laughs> Browner, look at that. Like, 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 imprison that dog. Locked up doing five to ten right now, man. I was, uh, <laughs> Sam, I was San Quentin, dude. I was so worried about it last night. I just, Scott, when you got Jack, did you have to like do potty training and all that, or did he? Did he come that way? No, I, I got to be honest with you, Alex. My life was so fucked up at that moment in 2014 when we got that dog. I don't even remember the early stages of having that dog. I really don't yeah. remember. So yeah. my biggest concern was like sleeping because I've heard puppies at night. You just got to get up every hour. And I'm like, dude, I, I need seven hours minimum. I just kind of person I am just, I mean, I know people can operate on four or five. I need at least seven. And last night, dude, we, uh, we, we gently, we let her go in the crate on her own by putting like treats in. I never grab her and pick her up anywhere. I, I don't believe in like making them go somewhere because it's not going to help them learn. Uh, so we put a little treat in there. She went in there and I sat next to her kind of, you know, Hey, you're a good girl, Nelly, Nelly, blah, blah, blah. And she put her head down, dude. And she passed the hell out until about four or five in the morning. And then my girl woke up, took her to pee, came back out, peed again. And we were up at six 30 and she's been good since. So I was, wow. I hope that is every night and not just the first night. Wow. You see, but is there any part of you and I want to get into today's show, but, but we have to warm up a little bit. Is there any part of you that's like, oh, dude, this is a monster commitment? What was like? <laughs> because things were smooth and easy, dude. It was yeah. me and you. We could travel when we needed to. You had to hustle down to Texas and go see your sister. You did. You know, uh, I'm working from home for now. You know, is there any part of you at all that is like, geez, we just took on a lot? Yes, of course. But I think working from home with really no end in sight at the moment has given me some some ease, some pause about it. Because if I if I had to leave for eight hours a day, there's no way we could have this dog. There's no way we could leave her here for eight hours. And hey, figure it out, girl. We'll see you later. You know. So mm -hmm. working from home is the is actually the main reason why I told her, all right, let's do it now because I'm here all day. All right. Well, let's just get rolling here because we it. got today is today's a big day. I mean, with with Major League Baseball coming back tonight. And with this story already now uh, about one of the star young players of a team that's the defending champions, this is a big deal. And it's, yeah. a, it's a big day if you're a sports fan. And even if you've been like me throughout all of this and gone, you know, look, I, I've had plenty to talk about. There's a lot of interesting stories out there. Um, my life is not devastated because there's no Padre game or no Dodger game or Angel game or whatever. I'm living. I'm fine. Uh, but I know that people would like it. And I think that when it comes back, hopefully it will add a sense of normalcy. That is assuming that baseball can stay clean, which already we've seen one guy not. And hopefully basketball comes back and stays healthy as well. So, okay, let me start off by saying you're going to see these guys flashing over my shoulder all day long, but I'm going to make this quick because I got to send love to all of our sponsors. Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102, San Diego, Riverside, LA, you got rats, bugs of any kind, termites. Corky's kills them, and he does it for the best price. 
Call Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. If you're seeing ads all over the internet that say you've got this high of a, of a, of a loan and, you've got, and now interest rates have come down. So look, Gary's the expert, you can tell. Um, if you got a loan, 3.75, 4%, and you can get into the under 3% range and save yourself a few hundred bucks a month, dude, do it. Dude, Gary oh. sent me a Gary sent me a radio ad to the great friends. It was just audio. He didn't send me a video if you want me to play it. Hmm. He sent hmm. an audio ad. Yes. Can you play it? We can all hear it. Uh, no, I don't have it loaded, but I can play it. Hmm. Now let's play it okay. tomorrow. Okay. 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 <laughs> Call Gary. Yeah. I, I should have told you before the show, but I'm distracted. It'll be better <laughs> this way. I'm just telling you, if you want to save money. If you want to buy a house and you think it's out of reach, if you want to sell a piece of real estate, call Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299. And Tori Holistics. I was over there yesterday. I was visiting with Ruthie. We've got a ton going on. August 1st is a Saturday night, and we're going to actually have a bunch to give away. But Tori Holistics, along with the Belly Up in Solana Beach, they're doing these like virtual concerts now. So the band... And the lighting and the stage guys and the camera guys, they're all in the belly up, but you are at home enjoying live performances and you're going to really wind up getting this stuff for free because the tickets are 10 bucks. You can buy them now, but I'm telling you next week, we're going to have a bunch to give away. And when you go into Tori Holistics, they're going to have for you to, to get as well. So we'll talk to Ruthie. Let's get Ruthie on the show tomorrow. Okay. Let's get Ruthie on and spend a few minutes with her tomorrow. Okay. Uh, shout outs to the Total T Clinic. Shout out to Rock and Wine Tours, my man Toby. Shout out to uh, hey cousin Nancy, Wicked Graphics. Really appreciate you, cousin Nancy. And check out our website. I, I don't promote it enough. Go to scottandbr.com because that's where you find our Instagram. It's where you find our Twitter. It's where you find copies of you know I say copies like you know replays of all the shows. Oh man, I know, right? <laughs> tapes. Sounds so old. Yeah, you find VHS tapes laying around. <laughs> find out more about our sponsors. Um, and I hate to see the Google analytics when the numbers are red going down. I like to see the Google analytics when they're green and going up. So, um, yesterday our salt and pepper impression mm. seemed to really be quite catchy. Mm. Push it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, push it real good. Uh, thank you. Cousin Nancy, wicked graphics and SMS global, smsglobal.com. Alex, can you put the phone number down on the lower third of the screen? 1-800-676-5500. Call SMS global, get an account with these guys and utilize the power of text messaging for whatever business you're in. This is how you receive our texts. And this is how you should absolutely send these texts to your clients, to your customers, to your followers, to anybody that's going to do business with you. SMSglobal.com. Have I missed anybody? I, I don't, I don't think I, I don't have. I think so. You did okay. a really good job today. I was, that Thanks. was awesome. Fast. fast. That was really good. Rolling. Well, cause here's the thing, guys. I'm wondering and, where you're going to start because as as someone like I know you very well, right? And I know the things that attract you. You can talk about opening day. You could talk about the Lakers playing tonight. You could talk about uh, the Washington team changing their name. But I think there's one story that I think you're going to start, but I'm curious to see where you're going to start. Well, you know me well. And so I would say this. Yes, tonight, Major League Baseball's regular season returns. And I'll tell you truthfully, the story that I am most interested in is that I, and I told you guys this, I thought a lot of the rich players, a lot of the guys who don't need the money, they might bail on the season. And that really didn't happen. In very few cases did it happen. Uh, what I was always interested in was the guy at the end of the roster trying to make the team. That's mm -hmm. the guy making 500 grand a year, not 10 million a year, who needed to try and get into camp and wanted this season to go. One of my favorite stories of this Major League Baseball season is, is a local story here. You've met the dad. You've met the kids if you've been a radio listener for years. Um, it's This is not where I'm starting, Alex, just so you know. Okay. By the way, did they make it? Spoiler alert. They made it. Both. So my guys, both guys made it. This is such oh, an amazing congrats. story. Listen, listen to this. Two kids. You guys will be fascinated by this. Two young men who both played high school baseball at La Jolla High School. These are not kids battling their way out of tough neighborhoods. These are kids whose dad's a, an anesthesiologist and he makes good money. And, and these guys had a lot of uh, privileges, if you will, growing up. But dad made them work super hard. They both played at La Jolla High School. They both played at the University of San Francisco. In fact, interesting tonight, when the Yankees take on the Nationals, you know who the starting pitcher is for the Yankees, right? Gary Cole. 
Garrett Cole. When Garrett Cole was at UCLA, this kid, Kyle Zimmer, went to UCLA for the University of San Francisco and mowed down UCLA that day against Garrett Cole, and boom, the kid blew up. He became the fifth overall pick in the, in the Major League Baseball draft. Two years later, little brother, who also starred at the University of San Francisco, little brother gets drafted number 21 overall by the Cleveland Indians. So two brothers within two years become first-round draft choices, both from La Jolla High School. But it just didn't go the way you'd hoped. It just didn't go that way. Big brother's arm, pitching arm, constantly screwed up. Constant injuries. Tommy John. Man, um, surgery after surgery. I'm not sure which ones, but so many surgeries and so much rehab and, and the prospect of ever becoming a star was, was looking very bleak. Little brother is on the verge of superstardom for the, the Cleveland Indians. He's making diving catches. He's running he and bombs. banging into walls. He's hitting bomb home runs. He's this close to becoming part of that same conversation of who are the young superstars in the game? Because he was part of like the USA teams that traveled the world that were the under 21 teams. I mean, he was there with all of these young superstars. He was right alongside of these guys, but he got hurt. And then two years of injuries. And now after all of these years, same high school, same college, both first round picks, both of these kids, Kyle and Bradley Zimmer have made it to the major leagues on opening day rosters. And this is the best part. I'm getting chills. The Royals are playing the Indians <laughs> in the opening series. So these two kids, same they high school, off? same they for the first time in their lives, they're <laughs> they're likely to face off. One's a pitcher, one's an outfielder and a hitter. And for I'm the, assuming Doctor Z is uh, on his way to Cleveland. Can't get into the game. Oh, that's uh, right. Uh, that is right. No. So he can't. He's not going to go and like just meet up with him in a hotel or something. I don't know. What do you do? He, he, it's probably better on TV. Dude, he can't get into the game. I forgot there, about there, that. There's not even like, even if you're making this appeal to major league baseball, my two sons finally, finally have both made major league opening day rosters and they're facing off for the first time in their lives. I'm the dad. I got to be there. Baseball's like, Sorry, Dr. Zimmer, can't get you in. Wow. I'm calling I'm calling the team's PR saying, hey, we're going to do a story on these two guys and we're sending the dad out there. Can you put him in the press box? And they're like, you mean the dad's now a reporter, the doctor? Really? Really? You, you want us to just issue him press credentials? Really? I'm like, yes. he's a doctor. He doesn't have COVID. He's fine. <laughs> he's probably the safest of everybody. So he's doing a watch a party at his, at his pizza joint. Um, he really should have a watch party up at best socially distance outdoor watch party. And you probably should do that. So you asked well, me that question, to Dr. Z. Yeah. So for all that talk about what is my favorite story to start today? Yeah. Opening day in baseball is kind of on my mind and close to my heart, but hold on a second. Wait a second here, everybody. It's actually happening. You've seen the videos. You've seen him get in shape and ripped. And you're thinking, is he really going to, is Mike Tyson really planning on some kind of a comeback? Yeah. Mike Tyson against Roy Jones Jr. on pay-per-view in September. Both guys, I mean, Mike Tyson is what, 54? And yeah. Roy Jones is probably at least 50, I would think. And these two guys going to get into the ring. 51. Two 50-plus-year-old guys, both legends in the sport, are going to have a fight and exhibition. And honestly, I, I don't even know where to go with this because at the end of Roy Jones Jr.'s career, when Roy Jones was considered the best pound for pound fighter in the world, his skills diminished quickly. He, by the way, do you guys notice the way I'm holding my hands here? Like as if I'm, I I grabbed somebody uh, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, you know, like yeah. as if I know what I'm no, yeah, no, please, please no? Don't. your dad no? would not be proud of this. You're break no? your pinky like that, dude. Yeah. Well, I'm going to poke somebody in the eye with it. That's what you're my doing goal. With that? I don't know. Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr., two 50-year-old guys that are going to fight each other. And I don't know if Roy Jones is too fast and too skilled for old-ass Mike Tyson or if Mike Tyson is just too strong and too powerful for Roy Jones. I see, Grande, you've already posted on Sided. Who does everybody got? Who, what, what's the vote so far? 82% to Tyson. 
I think now, that's pretty disrespectful to Roy Jones Jr., man, because you all know we were all making fun of Tyson trying to do a comeback. And everybody for the longest time was making fun of Roy Jones because that homeboy had been fighting. His last fight was in 2018. Mike Tyson hasn't stepped in the ring since 2005. So I think the 82% is very disrespectful to Roy Jones Jr., who has continued to box, whether you – and, I mean, it, he's probably fought better guys than Mike Tyson at, at age 54. Uh, Brown is looking at me winning? like I'm dumb as hell. Has he has he been winning, Roy Jones? You say he's been fighting. Yeah. Man, I haven't seen a Roy Jones Jr. fight in years on HBO. What? Well, well, seriously, you'd have to pull up. Okay, here we go. When's the last time he fought? I can't say. So that. February eighth, two thousand eighteen. Who did he fight? I don't know, but he won. <laughs> he's been winning. Bobby what, Gunn. What, what? What? Uh? What weight class was he fighting in? Uh, cruiserweight. So about what was that one ninety something like that? Yeah. So I mean, heavyweight would probably be like two ten. And above, I yeah. think. Okay. So I'm assuming but the way both of you looked at me when I said it's disrespectful to Roy Jones that both of you are going to pick Mike Tyson here. Well, can you go back to Roy's resume for a moment? I want to hear you say he's been fighting. When was the last time Roy Jones was a champ? Uh, he won the vacant WBU German cruiserweight title in 2018. Okay. Go back further to like a legit title. Something like. Not a, not a German title, a world championship. IBO cruiserweight. That's a good one. Which one? What year? 2009 come on dude dude that's a long ass time ago dude mike tyson look at mike tyson's fight record is this impressive i can't see it so his last fight he lost to kevin mcbride in 2000 fight before that he got knocked out by danny williams in 2004 his last win is in 2003 against the gentleman named clifford etienne and then mm -hmm. before that he got knocked out by lennox lewis in 2002 we're talking 18 years since he fought somebody even remotely good. Wait, wait, just go back. The, the the two fights you said were both losses. Yes. For Tyson. Give me the give me the names, the dates. Kevin McBride in 2005, June 11th was his last fight. He got uh he lost. Okay. In 2004 was his last fight before that. He was fighting a guy named Danny Williams. He lost. Mm -hmm. He got knocked out. His last mm -hmm. win was in 2003 against Clifford Etienne that he knocked mm -hmm. out in 49 seconds. Oh my God. Like, I don't even remember Browner. Do you remember Tyson's last two fights against these no name guys that I don't, do you remember Tyson losing those? La I mean, I do remember the end of the Lennox Lewis thing, right? You know, where, where Tyson pretty much said in the ring, Hey I'm Lennox, done. I'm sorry, Lennox. I didn't mean I was going to eat your children, Lennox. I right. just said we were, we were just doing fight promotion, Lennox. And there, there, there's your mother. I'm so sorry, Mr. Lennox Lewis. I'm so sorry that I did that. I didn't mean to say that I was going to eat his children, you know? And, and so Tyson like opened the curtain and was like, <laughs> I was only fucking around. Sorry. Yeah. You just kicked my ass. I'm done. I don't remember Tyson's last two losses. Do you guys? I remember them, but they were not good fights. He was not prepared. It was not worth watching, even though I watched them both. And I'll tell you this right now. The reason why, this is a horrible idea. And well, I yeah. Mean, this is the <laughs> horrible idea of horrible ideas. Roy Jones Jr. is one punch away from dying. I, I, I can't, I, I, that's why he's fighting in these other countries. This is a, that's why headgear has been sanctioned for this fight. This no. is not, yeah, this is uh. not something to be paying for. This is an accident waiting to happen. It is such a shit show that a uh, NBA player who no one will sign is going to fight a YouTube guy who says racist shit because you need people else, you need other people to fight during this thing. This is a horrible idea. I hope this gets canceled for whatever reason. I don't want to see Mike Tyson fight Roy Jones Jr. I love both these guys. In the prime of his career, Roy Jones Jr. was one of the funnest people to watch fight. In the prime of Mike Tyson's career, he was arguably the greatest fighter ever pound for pound. I don't want to watch these two guys in their advanced age hurt each other. You I are, don't. by the way, you, 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 in my opinion, that, that analysis is so far off, and here's why. You ready? Roy Jones, when he fought, was as boring as Floyd Mayweather. What? Seriously. Just what? staying away. Yeah. What? Yeah. Just staying away, <laughs> playing defense. Nobody could ever touch him. They used to wow. show they, they used to have they used to have like documentaries about uh, Roy Jones, and they would show him in like a backyard chasing chickens. And like, oh, this is where Roy gets his speed from. And he was so fast 
and so quick that no one ever seemed to really touch him. I don't remember. You'll have to tell me I'm wrong. I can't remember one like war that Roy Jones had where it was really like two guys just going out. You'll, you'll, you'll school me if I'm wrong, but, but Tyson was so exciting because you just didn't know, was he going to knock somebody out later on? Was he going to bite somebody's ear? Was he going to, you know, give a crazy interview? You just never knew he was so unpredictable. It's funny. I didn't realize that headgear was sanctioned for this fight. No, it's not. The, Are you I, sure? I thought I overheard you say it wasn't. Did you say it was? Because the Athletic Commissioner of California said he does not expect ring gear. He expects larger gloves, though. I, w- I was under the impression from what I read that there would be headgear, there would be large gloves. No, mm-hmm. he, I, the Athletic Commissioner says he doesn't expect headgear, but that could change, and then there will be larger gloves. And well, did you guys know that they're also making a 10-part documentary leading up to the fight? That's what yeah, this is so, about then. That's well, what but, this is about. Probably. But, but here, you know, here's what it's about. It, it, it's about an app. The app is called Thriller. I was yeah. reading about it today. So what they do is they say, okay, look, we, we've got a bunch of money. We need something that's a monster like PR move. Tyson's getting in shape. We'll have him fight Roy Jones. We'll produce documentaries about it. It'll lead up to the fight and then everybody will buy the fight on our app and then we'll be able to go out and compete because, you know, that that first app, the one zone, the one that took out HBO boxing, I don't know that that's become like a huge hit, you know? And, and well, there hasn't just, there's just, unfortunately for them, there just hasn't been any boxing to promote. Top no, Rank's but, doing it all on ESPN. No, but it wasn't just the boxing part of it. There was other things. Like there baseball. Were, there were, well, base, their, their thing with baseball was they were supposed to do the, uh, the NFL red zone for baseball during the baseball mm-hmm. season this year. And there's no baseball. They just have shit luck right now. I feel like they also at one time were starting to produce uh, a, a radio show simulcast, Pat McAfee. Mm-hmm. And I don't think, I don't think that lasted very long. I don't think. McAfee's um, still doing it. I don't know if it's on the zone. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure it's, they still yeah. got the affiliation with it. So anyway, look, long story short is it, it's about something else. It's not about Tyson wanting to fight or Roy Jones wanting to fight. It's about both of these guys doing something now that's a big PR stunt. And when you look at the app, apparently there's a whole bunch of people that are involved in it from Snoop Dogg to other celebrities. Um, you know, Marshmallow, you, you, you know, DJ Marshmallow. Celebrity. Yeah, that's right. Snoop Dogg and Marshmallow. By yeah. the way, Scott, since you're so cool and hip and, and in with it, Scott, did you watch DMX versus Snoop last night on Instagram? I did not. No. I did not. Versus is what it's called. Versus. But it's on Instagram, right? Yeah, it's on Instagram and it's available on Apple Music as well. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. So, so anyway, listen. I, so are so you, you said you started off with yeah. what's on your mind, and I will tell you that Tyson one. versus Roy <laughs> Jones is this is me. This is who I am as a sports fan. Most people are like, it's baseball. It's opening day. It's awesome. I'm like, yeah, okay. But for me, you know me, I love the story. And I love the story of two 50-something guys getting themselves back into shape and let's see what they got. But don't this, doesn't this run the risk of people becoming disinterested as this goes on? Because if this is not as good as a, a product produced like 24-7, people are going to lose interest. People don't want to see Mike Tyson fight anymore. They want to see Mike Tyson entertain because the second half of Mike Tyson's career has been a more on the entertaining part, being in a, a hangover or doing some crazy parts in these movies. Well, he also one had a one-man one stage show. Yeah. yeah. These are the things that people have come now uh, adjusted to watching Mike Tyson do, like, roast. No one really wants to see him fight. And Roy Jones, Roy Jones Jr., has never been an entertaining personality. He was an entertaining mm-hmm. fighter. He was never mm-hmm. an entertaining personality. He was on HBO, HBO for years, boxing, man. Dude. Yeah. Him and Jim Lampley, him and Jim Lampley together, and and Lamp would make make, make Roy Jones pretty interesting to me. Oh, well, he better bring Jim Lampley with him. <laughs> so, what is uh in in your in your opinion, Browner? When you say nobody wants to watch bang, this bang, fight, bang, bang, bang. what is the uh what's like a solid number of pay per views for you to be like, all right, I was wrong. Oh, for those two, five million. Dude, that would be the biggest pay per view of all time if that if that happens. What are you talking about? Five, five million. million. No one's done five million. Not even McGregor Mayweather did five million. Okay, let me adjust that. If this thing gets, <laughs> if this thing gets, if this thing gets a hundred thousand pay per view buys, it was a rounding success. No. Okay, how much do you think it would be? How much would it be? They're it's probably going to charge bucks. like seventy five bucks. Yeah. Okay. No way in hell okay. I'm seventy bucks for that. Okay, I'm going to say this right now. I'm just telling you right now. I disagree, Browner. You say nobody wants to see Tyson fight. I do. 
So already I've proven you wrong, just so you know. <laughs> I I want to see Tyson fight, and you got to understand why I want to see it. You ready? Because you see, you're not in touch with this emotion, Mr. Gold Microphone. The reason I want to see Mike Tyson fight is because I'm 50, and he's 54, and Roy's 51. And I want to see if guys who are at one time in their lives, in their physical primes, can get themselves back into really good shape. Do they still have any form of skill? And if not, how different do they look? Can I, from my naked eye, remember Roy Jones not being able to be touched? And can I remember Mike Tyson devastating with a big knockout punch? Or are these guys old, fat, slow, no skill? You got it wrong, man. I want to see it. The last time I remember Roy Jones Jr., he got hit so hard, he got back up and was pointing in a different direction than the actual fight was happening, okay? <laughs> That's the last time I remember him <laughs> fighting. It didn't get better after that. I agree with you on that, dude. Like, I don't think to say people don't want to see this. I, I, people want to see this. Am I one of them? No. I, I, You're comparing Roy Jones Jr. like one punch and you're done. I compare him to Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell fought Tito Ortiz in 2018. Chuck Liddell shouldn't be fighting anybody anymore. Anybody anymore. So there's a, like, with Tyson, I'm very intrigued. With Roy Jones, I don't know. I have that one, because that one, I don't think Tyson has the, the brain trauma that Roy Jones, because Tyson, yeah, he lost a couple, but Roy Jones, has been, Roy Jones has been in a lot of fights and yes. a lot of hits. Tyson kind of knocked everybody out in a round or two for the most part of his career. So I'm with you on maybe I don't want to see it, but at the same time, if they're like, hey, it's only 30 bucks, I'm like, well, you know what? I could afford 30 bucks. Price point is <laughs> going to be very important too. If it's 75 bucks, no way. If it's yeah, yeah bucks, I mean, yes. Yeah. The UFC yeah. just had one of their biggest cards ever in Abu Dhabi and it was 75 bucks. And I was like, um. Yeah. So yeah. I'm definitely not throwing out 75 for Tyson Jones. No, he. they have to understand. Look. If you're getting two guys in their prime and it's $75, and then you're getting two guys that are 50% past their prime or 100% past their prime, you should you should lower it at least by half. If if it's if it's under 50 bucks, guaranteed I'm getting it. If it's under 50 bucks, I'm interested in watching it. If it's over 50 bucks, no way, because now it's just a money grab. So what no you're way. saying is nobody wants to watch this at 75 bucks, JB. <laughs> yeah. So now you've totally just done a 180. <laughs> nobody wants to watch this. But if it's under 50, now, because, uh, now you got me. And we all love a good car crash. Again, this is it when you know two people, it's going to be some form of entertaining because you there are great moments where you remember these two dudes doing their thing at the peak of their career. So yeah. you like like Scott said, you want to see if they can capture. A small amount of it. I saw Roy Jones Jr. get hit so hard, he was fighting in the opposite direction. I'm done. That was <laughs> enough for me. No, all right. Well, you know what? Let me let's keep rolling. It, it's it's it. a Thursday afternoon. Thanks to all of our great sponsors, Corky's Pest Control, 1 800 901 1102. Thanks to Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299, and Tory Holistics, where you can save 20% by using our promo code GRANDE. So I have a question. question. We know tonight, yeah, that's right. We, we know baseball comes back tonight, and these games are televised by ESPN. Is that right? So you got the Nationals and the Yankees, which is the East Coast game, mm -hmm. and then you've got the Giants and the Dodgers. Are both of these games televised ESPN. by ESPN? Yes, sir. Okay. What time does the Yankee game go today? I think Anthony Fauci throws out the first pitch about 4.05, and the first pitch is at about 4.08. Okay, so 4 o'clock Pacific time. Yes. And then the Dodger game is likely to be 7 o'clock. 7 something, yeah. Yeah, okay. So these two games are both on ESPN. Here's a question. The Lakers and the Mavericks in NBA preseason. Exhibition. Exhibition. Yeah. Is that game on TV? Yes. NBA, NBA TV. TV. NBA TV. Yes. And what time is that game on? The Lakers and the Mavericks. Six, I think. Maybe. Okay. Six. Alex Come looks on. like he's intently trying to find the answer for this. Look at him. Like look, I, at, look, I feel like I knew this. I just didn't want to say the wrong answer. It's either okay. four o'clock our time or six our our time, but I think it's four. No, no, I think you like it. you like the guy I was on the phone with with the doctor. I was like, no, dude, it's the 16th. He's like, no, it's the 14th. I'm like, no, we just I booked see. it for the 16th. You better hope they go in the back and out the front. That's what you need to be worried about. The time is well, not that important. Okay, gotcha. Well, they're going in both the front and the back. No, no, that ain't the, the front I'm talking about. 
well, I'm, I'm telling you, this, this Eiffel Tower thing is actually happening. Okay, here we go. All right, what do you got, Grande? Give me a three shot. I like when you go three shots. I don't know why you're so anti three shot. Um, just because sometimes none of us are paying attention to the camera and it's kind of <laughs> weird looking. <laughs> uh, tonight at 4 p.m., Lakers mm -hmm. Mavericks on NBA TV. All right, so you got the Lakers and the Mavericks at the same time as the Yankees and the Nationals, and the Lakers don't necessarily go head to head with the Dodgers. So, um, okay, I'm, I, I'm, I really would like to start seeing all this stuff. I'm, I, you know, I, I think I I'm more inclined to watch baseball today because it's a game that that wow. kind of counts. And uh, wow. you know, LeBron, LeBron can put up all the Instagram posts he wants about this. Ain't an exhibition to me. But wow, I don't know, I, man. What a traitor! Wait, what wait, but hold on, about? hold on. Put put up LeBron's put up LeBron's Instagram post, dude. You th I, I, I'm I'm with you. You have the start of baseball's opening day versus NBA's bubble preseason exhibition game, and I get what LeBron's saying. Like, hey, hey, ain't no scrimmage. Everything's about the championship mindset. In fact. So much so that take a look at this cartoon of me. Like, <laughs> like, like, like I, this, this right here, you see this picture? You see this picture right here? You see this? This picture right here, this lets you know. Championship mindset. I mean, details, tattoos, uh, gray in the beard, necklaces, headdress, the whole deal. It's championship mindset. So here's the question. Would question. you rather watch tonight opening night of baseball or opening night of NBA preseason exhibition counting game game one non-counting game game one big brown you've or, got this look or, like, or 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 the final 20 minutes of the sky and br podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah or throw us in there brown why are, why are you think we're so out of our minds that baseball would be a more interesting watch tonight than exhibition basketball he's a hoop head after anthony fauci's first pitch man is about brown 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 I don't know what's <laughs> wrong with y'all. You've been sitting here for the last couple of days telling me LeBron run the league. You got to make sure LeBron is okay with Black Lives Matter being on the court. You got to make sure LeBron is okay with what goes on the back of the jersey. Now LeBron about to play, and you're telling me you're going to be watching baseball? Two teams you don't even care about? Two teams that's so far on the East Coast, you wouldn't even go if they paid you. you you're not going to watch LeBron? Come on, dog. What are you doing? What's wrong with What is you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, dog? If, now, if you told me you was going to watch the Dodgers, I'm in there. I got that because I'm going to watch some of that. I'm going to probably watch more Angels than I've ever watched before because I want to see Otani. I want to see uh, Trout. I want to see Rendon. I want to see these dudes. Y'all know my Padres, we going to the World Series. So I'm wrapped in on this. But tonight, Brian is back, baby. What y'all do? What? I, I'm, I'm losing it right now. I can't you 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 silver screen and roll. You missed the <laughs> podcast, dog. You ain't watching Prime. What is wrong with you? Redeem I mean, yourself. dude, July thirtieth. I'm all in, man. I'm all in. There's no. no way. There's no way I'm choosing Dodgers or Padres over LeBron after July thirtieth. These are exhibition games, man. This is preseason. We're over here talking about who gives a shit about NFL preseason. Now over here, you're. Freaking out like I'm gonna miss the NBA Finals or something. Hey, what is this game first season game? Do I really need to watch? Run? Do I need really need to watch Taylor Horton Tucker and 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 Costas and Ted Kumpo and and whoever else is on gonna be playing this game? Come this on, this is man. even better. This is why you gotta watch the first quarter because Brown ain't coming back after that. That's actually <laughs> actually actually that's probably exactly what I was gonna do is watch the first quarter and then watch baseball the rest of the yeah, game. Why don't you relax? Yeah, why don't you relax? Said, yeah, you relax. Man. I'm you just saying. Scott. You yeah. Scott. Well, what I had to do the about? chronology of who's on when. <laughs> Come on, man. Brian. All right, baby, so look. Brian. So so look, so so you got LeBron Wait, do you tonight. Do you know where NBA TV is on your TV? Um, I I don't, See, but I think I'll be able to find it. it. No, hold on. I'll find it. Listen shit. here. Yeah. I'm not I'm not one to promote any cable network over another, but one of the best things about my cable network, I wouldn't even say what it is. On my remote, there's a microphone button, and I just hit the <laughs> microphone button and say Lakers, and it takes me to the Lakers game fantastic invention Ooh, i don't have like, to i don't have to know any tv channel ever that's Tim like Scott. the uh yeah that, that's like the um the you hear these commercials with vin scully and he's like hey everybody it's me vin scully that's my vin scully i don't really know <laughs> what it is time yeah. for dodgers and, baseball right that's what he says because it's time for dodgers baseball and today i've got hey alexa find me dodger base and he does he does this whole thing like hey i'm an older guy but i can figure out this shit you know what I mean? Yeah. 
yesterday, yesterday, you missed the evolution of Bow Bow because you wasn't tuned in to exhibition, man. Y'all lucky I'm here, okay? Y'all lucky I'm here. The what quite possibly could have come to fruition yesterday was the Lakers' second biggest threat to a title run, okay? A 20-year-old man by the name of Bo Bo, 7'2", three-point shoot, rebound, shot blocking, floor running, 20-year-old for the Denver Nuggets, okay? AD, watch your back, bro. Watch your back. I, I, I got to find NBA dog. TV. I got to find NBA TV here, dog. I got to find it. I got to know where it is. Well, I'm going to find got, it. I don't know. I'm in Just all kinds the, of channels. Hit the microphone button and hit NBA TV. I don't have you, it. Yeah, you, you go to go search. On. There's a search. There's a search button on your yeah. on your remote. Yeah, search. Hit that. Yeah, and then type in NBA TV. Oh, okay. Or I haven't NBA. gotten there yet. Okay. Or NBA. All right. All right. So look. So NBA. I'm going to find NBA TV, and I know where ESPN is. It is opening day of Major League Baseball. Fifteen minutes away from opening day. Okay. So look, I I was on a radio show this morning in Phoenix, and they were asking me about the Padres, and I'm saying to these guys, <laughs> look, guys, I'm like. You, you got to understand something here. I'm a natural born skeptic and I've not seen the Padres, not Ron Fowler, not AJ Preller, not Jace Tingler. I've not seen one of these guys Tinglers. have any success of any kind in major league baseball as an owner, a GM or a manager. Now, is there something to be excited about if you're a Padre fan? Yeah. Fernando Tatis is a young up and coming star. Your starting pitcher, Chris Paddock, is a guy that you think is on the verge of becoming a star. And you've got an established guy in Manny Machado. But you got a lot of waste in an Eric Hosmer or a Will Myers. And so do I think that the Padres have a real chance this year because of the 60-game sprint? No, I do not. Mm -hmm. Particularly when you look at the Dodgers and you see what they just did with Mookie Betts. And you know that they've got the MVP, Bellinger. And now you've got the AL MVP and the NL MVP on the same team. These are the two guys that are both favored to win the National League MVP. If you're into wagering on this kind of stuff, both of them are seven to one. Okay, that's hey, if this were horse racing, which I hope Del Mar comes back this Friday, if I get a horse that's seven to one and his name is Bellinger or his name is Betts, dude, I will take that bet all day long. So again, I was on in Phoenix this morning. They said, do you think the Padres have a chance because of the shortened season? And my answer is, no, because they've got to play in the same division as the Dodgers, and I've not seen these guys succeed. I'll believe it when I see it. Prove it. Do it. Don't just talk about it. Browner, I know you think the Padres are going to win the World Series. Bro, this Will Myers slander has got to stop, bro. If you want to talk about Eric Hosmer not showing up, I'm cool, whatever. Like I told y'all, I'm not invested in that. That's a who, what, where, when, I don't care how. But this Will Myers slander got to stop. He's a super utility man. He can play every position. Hell, he might manage the team this year. He, he can do anything. Y'all got to let that man play, okay? You got to let players play, baby. They got to t short. Sure. They got Machado. You know they got my dog family. So I think, I think we rolling this year. I think we rolling. We are family, okay? We taking that from Pittsburgh. We are family. I got all my whatever the rest of it is. So yeah, now if I were now by the way, by the way, if I if I were singing that song, what if is I were like doing? we are family. Uh, Look at your hair. Uh, uh, I got all my sisters in me. Uh, uh. And then you'd be like, oh dog, don't do that. Don't do that. And by the way, your rendition stunk. Okay. And mine is freaking awesome. First of all, you everything, everything cannot be above the shoulders. It can't be. Every dance move you got. Yeah, no, no. You gotta at least keep something in here. No, oh, what, what? Oh my God! What the fuck? It, no, man. Okay, no. Stop, stop. No, stop going above the shoulders. Just stop doing that. You'll be all right. There you go. Oh, oh I mean, that's better. That's better. Is it? Uh, uh, the running can, man. The running nobody, man. Now? Nobody can get hurt if he keeps it below the shoulders. See, that's good. That's that's okay. That's okay. That's I, grooving. I, grooving. I, 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 grooving. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. This, no, no, in a circle, in a circle, not no Padre. Gotcha. gotcha. No, in a circle. Yeah. Okay, right. but take your, but take your, take your Padre head off for a second, for real. JP, okay. okay. Come on. <laughs> what? They're really what? gonna beat the Dodgers? Yo. Okay. Here's my thing. This oh, and yes. Oh, before you answer that question, the MLB and MLB are still negotiating to possibly expand the playoffs to 16. Yeah. 
16. See, we now wait a second. I, wait, I wait, I have a question. Wait, I have a question. Call you mean me to tell me comments like that? L let me get this straight. You mean to tell me that today is opening day of <laughs> of baseball, mm -hmm. and today they're discussing what's going to happen 60 games from now? Yes. They're not like they're not like, hey, so here's the story this season. Um, we're going to play 60 games, and then we've got 10 playoff teams. And uh, the team with the best record in both leagues is going to have the bye. And then there's going to be two teams, uh, play, four teams total that play. Wait, they're making up the rules now? They don't know what the playoffs are going into the season for reals? Yeah, man, this is the year to do it. Why not? This is a year where you who knows what's going to happen. Do you know Juan Soto is going to test positive and miss opening day? No. Nope. This is the kind of year where you say, fuck it. Let's go DH. We're doing we're putting a guy on second if we go to extra innings. Dude, who cares, man? This is not your tradition. This is not your dad's baseball. That's for damn sure. To answer your question with my Padre head off, you yes. just helped me get halfway there. No one knows what's going to happen. If the Dodgers, for whatever reason, get a guy, get COVID, and he's got to miss 10 games or 14 days, that's your window. I don't see – I think Manny Machado, Tatis, Pham, uh, Paddock, the, the pin, I think they can hang around and something can happen where somebody else falls off, and then here we go. And it's a 16-team playoff. If it's a 16-team playoff, we in there. I'm sorry. I just wanted to hear, I just wanted to hear you say – that yes, the Padres can beat the Dodgers for the NL West. But if you want to like backdoor it and be like, yeah, you know, with a 16 team playoff, we have a window. If Bellinger gets uh, COVID and all these stipulations, then that's oh, the truth. Wait, wait, wait it's just such a typical Padre fan because, you know, Padre fans do this every day. They're like this. I go, listen, here's the deal. If Eric Hosmer has comparable to the best year of his career, and if Will Myers can just be for 60 games what he was in the first half of one season Done. five years ago, and, and if Manny Machado could just be what he was in his best year with the Orioles, and if Tatis can stay healthy for all 60 games and hit 330 with, with 20 home runs, and if Paddock, by the way, can can you know give you uh 10 wins starts, in a 60 right, game season. Right. <laughs> he I mean, ran out of gas last year. It's, always, it's gas. always the same thing with Padre fans. If this than that. Whereas with Dodger fans, it's like, yes, we have gone out and paid the best players in baseball and we have what the Lakers have. We got two of the best on our roster and we expect based on our track record here, particularly in the last five to seven years where we've been crushing everybody in the division. Yeah. We expect to finally pull this thing off. Whereas Padre fans hope Dodger fans expect, you see the difference. Listen, as a great man once said, yeah. You shall not pass. That's what the Padres going to say to the Dodgers. And that great man was Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. Here's the difference between the Dodgers mm. and the Padres. Last year, when Tatis was 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 doing very well in spring training, Padres called him up because they had no better options. The Dodgers have this like superstar minor leaguer in Gavin Lux. And you know what? They're like, you know what? You're not ready yet. Go on down back to AAA. We don't need you. That's how good they are. Oh, oh, slow That's down, how good slow, they slow are. Slow down, slow down. Sometimes when you get a superstar like Tatis, you bring him up because you believe in him. You maybe, let him skip AAA? Maybe. I mean, obviously it worked out for him. Dude, maybe I was screaming on the radio last year, like right. put this kid on the major league roster. And they, they didn't do it because they thought they were going to win with him. They did it because they needed to market the team. They had to create excitement. This year, they'll spend more time, in my opinion, promoting their brown uniforms than they will trying to win baseball games. And okay. just by the way, by the way, let me ask you a question. Would you rather have Dave Roberts based on what he's done thus far, or would you rather have Jace Tingler based oh, on what on, he's man. never done? Right. I mean, manager well, for manager, ownership baseball, for ownership. Though, in baseball though, dude, Dave Roberts has been heavily criticized for his actual I baseball. Got it. But if we're I talking about, but it's, it's an unfair question though, to be fair. Of course it's unfair. Because, but everything Dave weighs. On the Dodgers. We yeah, want Dave everything... Roberts on the Padres. Everything weighs. Everything weighs in the Dodgers' favor. Yes. That's all I'm trying yes. to say. Yes. Everything Until weighs now. In the Dodgers except favor. the stadium. Until now, because you know what's happening now. The Clippers coming up. The Lakers going down. The Padres coming up. The Dodgers are going. They they not going down, but they gonna stay like this. They gonna flatline. Please. They're gonna win 104 games every year. No, 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 no. Listen, <laughs> Padres, 37 wins. 37. That's the number. 37 out of 60. Calling mm -hmm. it right now. Put mm -hmm. it on the board. I have a question. I have a question. If the Padres win less than 37 games, will you let me shave that fro that you've been growing? Are you that confident in your Padres? 
Uh, how how say what we talk about? Say bald? Yeah, talking Jimmy Walker. He wore a hat. He had, no, he had like a. Uh, you wore a hat. Uh, you wore a. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do that. And if they win thirty seven games, what you go? You gonna shave your head? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do it. I love I love when you guys do this, and I have nothing to do with it. Come this on. No, Come wait a second, on. Alex. No, no, you're on my side, pal. You're getting roped yeah, into this, too. Both y'all how y'all how confident are you that the Padres will win less than 37 games? 37 games is a 600 winning percentage. Yeah. Talk to me. 37. You in or you out? You up or you down? I'm saying 37. I'm willing to put these, I'm willing to put these locks on the line. Okay, I'm willing See, to I'm not. I'm not confident in anything in the baseball season this year, so I'm not going to put my shaved head on the line. Browner is very confident. This is not my argument. This is your your two argument. No, I'm bowing out. out. No, I'm trying to back out. Bowing See what out. Doing? See what he's doing. Hey, Scott. What do you, you mean? What am I doing? Scott just threw it on me, and now he's on his phone pretending not to hear you. Uh-huh. I'm not listening to you. <laughs> I know you're not. You want to cut your hair? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me do this. Let me keep rolling here. It's Thursday afternoon. I want to thank all of our great sponsors. You see them flashing over my shoulder all day long. That's how we do this here. Okay, that's how we keep things going. So look, if you are trying to buy a house, you call Mountain Trust Mortgage. If you're getting weed, you go to Tory Holistics and save 20% by using our promo code GRANDE. If you got bugs, you call Corky's at 1-800-901-1102. And if you need a website, you call Wicked Graphics and Cousin Nancy. If you need to text message people, you use SMS Global. If you need a shot in the ass with some testosterone, you go to Total T. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you ever want to get a wine tour again in this lifetime, you're going to call Toby up at Rock and Wines. Thank you to all of our great sponsors. Baseball's back tonight. Basketball is in preseason, but back tonight. Okay. Alex, I'm curious, how have people voted on the poll you posted yesterday about Alex Caruso of the Lakers <laughs> skipping his sister's wedding? Okay. How have people voted so far on this? Because I'm telling you right now that if my sister were getting married and I were in the bubble and I had a chance to play with LeBron and the two guys in front of me both bounced injury and COVID fear. If I had the shot that Alex Caruso has in life, Hey sis, I appreciate you holding off on this wedding till August. I know it was supposed to be my off season and you waited for me, but I apologize. The world changed and I'm sticking in the bubble. How have people voted thus far? I'm curious. Well, some people, because both of you acted like I was crazy saying that I would leave the bubble. It's 50, 50. You're kidding. (laughs) Yep. Wow. 50, 50. That's pretty rare. You know, usually one side is clearly ahead of the next 50, 50. Wow. How about that? That is really interesting. Okay. Okay. There you go. Look, I want to talk about something too, from an aside of perspective. Uh, Chicago does not need federal help. Okay, I went on there and I said no. You know why I said no? Because that is not the way you help those people. Okay, the problem in Chicago is jobs. The problem in Chicago is opportunity. The problem in Chicago is lack of education. The problem in Chicago is that the surrounding states don't have any goddamn gun laws. Okay? Chicago's got some of the most strictest gun laws in the nation. Indiana doesn't. Wisconsin doesn't. Iowa doesn't. Missouri doesn't. They neighbor the state. So there's an easy way to get guns in. There are no gun stores in Chicago. There are no cocaine fields. There are no marijuana fields. So all that shit comes from somewhere else. So... My portion of this sided question, eh, I got a little annoyed with it. But well, here you better you better let you better let people kind of understand what it is you're talking about here, because you you've you've jumped the gun, and no one exactly knows what you're talking about. There, somebody posted a question about Fox sh- News. about shootings in Chicago. Okay, and so Browner is is I, I think I tweeted it to you earlier. Yeah, like, you got hey, me fired up. Yeah. I was going to start the show with that when you came to me, but we had to talk about the, we were talking about the dogs. That was like, yeah. So the, the question was, and I, I saw it, Fox News posts, Chicago needs federal help to stop senseless killings. And it's a, it's a statement. It's not a question. It's an agree or disagree. And so, uh, Alex, I'm not sure if you can pull it up or not. It's on politics. It's in the politics section. And, um, or it's like five down in the main feed, the new feed. 
but Chicago needs federal help to stop senseless killings. And you say that's not the case, Browner. No, that's not that. That's not the case. The like I said, the problem in Chicago is lack of opportunities. It's not lack of people who want to work. It's not that there are criminals all over the city. Chicago is a very large, diverse, welcoming city. But it's like other places, the opportunities are sparse now with the addition to COVID. So people are turning to crime because that is what's there because there's a lack of opportunity. There's a lack of education for these children. There's not a lot of things, positive things for these people to look forward to or to look to to get themselves out of the despair in which they live in. So for if you think sending in unmarked federal troops is going to help the situation. It is not. The thing that I don't want to happen that I know will happen is if you send these hard-working, dedicated public servants from the National Guard, from the Homeland Security, from the Border Patrol to the south side of Chicago, that one of them will be killed. And that, I do not want that. No one wants that. They, well, they, it's, they it's, it's just such a... Be there. It's such a huge problem. I mean, it really is. Like we, we talk about all these social issues on the show and it's such a huge problem. Black on black violence in the city of Chicago and the statistics are so overwhelming. And it's so weird to me in that, you know, hey, we're all fighting for equality. We all want to, you know, advance the cause and we're shooting each other and we're killing each other. And, um, and, and, you know, the, the, the violence amongst the community has been a big problem for a long time. I don't pretend to have any answers whatsoever. And sending in federal troops, I mean, I'm not even, I, I have no opinion because I have never even thought about these sorts of things. But, man, it's such a huge problem. Like, for me, the biggest problem is how people don't value life. Like, I'll shoot you. I'll kill you. Like, where's the value of life, man? That's kind of, and I guess to your point, Browner, when, you know, you're living in a way that you don't feel like you ever have any opportunity or you're not going anywhere and, you know, jobs aren't aren't around. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a sad existence. It's, you know, these are American people in a great American city. It's 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 a shame, really. So anyway, I voted to disagree. All right. There you go. OK, listen, um, let me uh, let me keep on flying here, because right now at this time of the day, it is time for mi hermano numero uno. From the 805, Oxnard representing Grande Alejandro Padilla and today's Tory Holistics highlight of the day, man. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Great friends, go to scottnbr.com. It looks like this, and you scroll down to this big old banner. You click it, and it takes you to our promo page where you're going to get 20% off your next purchase at Tory Holistics with a minimum $75 purchase when you use promo code GRANDE, G-R-A-N-D-E. That is the promo code with a minimum $75 purchase. If it doesn't work online, some people have had issues, just go ahead and show it up at the store, and they will validate it there at the store. All right, cool. Here we go, guys. I did not think that I would be talking about hockey today on all days, oh. on all days where opening day, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, LeBron is back. You got all kinds of other sporting things happening. But here I am bringing up the NHL in Seattle. Seattle's getting an NHL team. They, they announced their expansion team. are going to be called the Seattle Kraken. And I'm all about the way they're going to look, dude. They are kind of going with this like funky neon color. Not the same as the, as the Seahawks, obviously. But they're doing their own thing. They released a super cool like hype video. And uh, I just really love to see, and the reason this is the highlight of my day, I love to see a city where they lost one of the most important franchises of the city, and now they're getting another one. Because All I right, they lost the Sonics <laughs> and they get a hockey yeah. team. So they lost the Sonics, and now they're getting a hockey team. Does it replace the Sonics? No, maybe not. But it shows you that even when you lose a team, you could still get one back. Yeah. And maybe even you decide to change sports or leagues. You know what I liked about their jerseys was I thought, you know, the colors are are funky um, and the Seahawks kind of set the trend for for cool unis, I think. But their S has a bit of a Mariners kind of look to it. So it almost looks like they've taken kind of the best of the Mariners and the best of the Seahawks and they've turned it into their their new brand. But here's a question for you. Does anybody know what a Kraken is? K-R-A-K-E-N. For me, I'll tell you what the Kraken is. Liquor. It's a bar in Cardiff. <laughs> oh. it, it's a bar in Cardiff where Browner probably goes to pick up 40-plus-year-old white divorcees. Um, I'm telling you right now, 
it's a bar nightclub live music place the kraken yeah. in cardiff that t i don't even know what a Kraken. i know what is. it is i know what it is because of the liquor the bottle the kraken rum and their logo is is the Kraken. It's like this giant, like octopus looking thing. I'll just show you real quick. Hold on. Um, yeah, it it's uh, it's kind of like a giant, like squid octopus thing. The That's term, what Kraken is. Mm -hmm. the, the term release, release the, the Kraken. Kraken. Yeah. It's like a From giant squid. from the rum. It's like a giant squid octopus, uh, crushing eating sea monster. Yeah. Who says release the Kraken? Who says such a thing? The drink. Yes. And it was in the movie, I think, uh, Clash of the Titans. I think the Kraken is in Clash of the Titans. Yeah, release the Kraken. Yeah, and the Kraken, right. like, destroys everything. Well, there's your highlight of the day. <laughs> Presented by Tori Holistics. You can save 20% by using our promo code GRANDE. Browner, I hope you've got a great video for us today because we all want to know, what is you doing? What is... What is you doing? What are you... What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What is you doing? Ah, uh, this may uh, be the what is you doing of uh, uh, two ons. Okay, this may be the what is you doing of what is you doing of all what is you doing. Hey, mm -hmm. you, if a relationship don't work out, move on, man. Pack your stuff, go do something else. There's a bunch of people out there. They're all saying there's more fish in the sea because it is. Don't go burning down people's car, especially if you don't know how to burn down a car. Look at this clown. What is you doing? Get gas can. Oh. oh, oh, boom. Oh, okay, shit. if you're so dumb, you're gonna try to run back to get the evidence. Fool, it's the middle of the day. How you gonna blow somebody's car in the middle of the day? What's wrong with you? You are, Dude. The, this is the all time, what is you doing of what is you doing? Take a look, go back to the beginning of the video. I always love to analyze your videos, Browner. <laughs> First of all, there's a car right next to him. So like you're about to do major damage to other people's property. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love the way the dude or the girl, I can't even tell what the deal is, you know, like gets blown back into the other car. You know, Idiot. I'm trying to see, did the, did the, did the, did the, was, was the window open or did they smash the window first? Cause they I smashed thought they the were, window first. Uh huh. Yeah. They, they smashed the window, poured the gasoline in there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they dropped the match or were not ready and something else blew up in there, but God damn, you got to at least plan better. Like what? Break the back window. Pour it in the back. Just burn the back. Don't burn. Or the just goddamn or bar. or just throw a lighter in the gas tank. Man, or that. And <laughs> that gives you enough time to run. That gives you enough time to not get bodily injury. Now if the cops come looking for you, you're gonna be the dummy with no eyebrows because your goddamn face <laughs> got blown off because you out here trying to burn people's car down, fool. What is you doing? Yeah. Hey, what's up with all those bruises on your back? Right. You know. <laughs> I mean, Goodness. Can I see it one more time? God, I loved it. I love that. What is he doing? It's turned into like America's funniest videos, like the stupid version. Look at the mask on, too. Gotta have a mask. <laughs> the sound. The, the, the sound. Unbelievable sound. <laughs> 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 ah. All right, listen. Thank you, everybody. It's for officially being here today. opening day on baseball right now. Yeah. Here it goes. Let's go. Baseball's happening. Let's all go watch some baseball. Let's go, go watch a little bit of LeBron. baseball, the whole thing, right? Everybody have a great Thursday. We're back tomorrow. How good was Nelly? Huh? Nelly was good. You're, You're a good, good trainer. You're it's good. You are hot good. In you. Here. That's all I got. So take off all your clothes. I am yeah. getting. <laughs> I won't take my clothes off. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs>